would you like to go for your next holiday? Not so long ago, the answer would have been Hawaii, or maybe New York, and of course, Paris. How about Dubai? Dubai? Yes, it now ranks amongst the world's most popular travel destinations. It's the richest of the United Arab Emirates. Most of its wealth comes from trade, tourism, and cleverly produced exports. No, not oil. It has come a long way from being a small stop-off point for ancient fishermen to one of the world's most developed and vibrant tourist hotspots. So, where did it all begin? Anyone who knows the history of Singapore and Hong Kong will soon see the similarities. British ruled colonies that used their smarts to build their economies into world superpowers. And so for Dubai, the story is a fascinating one. Many people look at Dubai's location and assume its wealth has been attained by oil. However, oil only accounts for around 5% of Dubai's GDP. What? Where does the wealth come from, you ask? First, let's check the facts. Dubai is located on the eastern coast of the Persian Gulf. It also lies on the outskirts of the formidable Arabian Desert, which fills most of the lower Persian Gulf. Dubai was initially used as a stopping-off point for traders and fishermen travelling between Iran and Iraq to the north and Oman to the south. The more adventurous explorers from the east, such as India, would often stumble across Dubai. And therein lies Dubai's crucial strength, its location. If you look at a map, you'll notice that Dubai is the perfect hub for any vessels travelling to and from the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Sea. This accounts for East Africa, India, the Middle East, and many, many more. This was realised by a man who is considered by many to be the pioneer of Dubai. His name is long, as is his legacy. Saeed bin Maktoum bin Hasher al Maktoum recognised the potential to profit from Dubai's convenient location. He instigated the move for Dubai to become a free trade city, which immediately grasped the attention of all savvy entrepreneurs around the world. Free trade zones meant being able to trade goods in a port city without complementary taxes to the host port nation. For any business that relied on quickly selling or buying products at an international base, this was a huge incentive. Hong Kong and Singapore also employed a similar strategy. Dubai's initial export was in the pearl trade. However, by opening itself up to free trade, many new opportunities presented themselves. This attracted investment in the form of basic infrastructure and trading businesses. Dubai was beginning to grow. The major turning point occurred in 1966 when oil was discovered in Dubai territory. Fortunately for Dubai, Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoum was the man in charge he quickly realised the importance of investing the new oil money for the future. This meant infrastructure, and the more the better. Roads, schools, hospitals and banks. Basically, a place where international investors would feel comfortable in outlaying their fortunes, or even living there. And so began a massive construction development. Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum was only too aware of Dubai's limitations. To the west, was an unforgiving desert, devoid of any hope of agriculture or production. To the east was a sea that was producing oil, a commodity that he wisely saw as becoming quickly limited. Instead, the goal was to build Dubai and attract businesses with tax-friendly incentives. But first, Dubai had to establish itself as a shipping hub. The first steps to this was in constructing the now famous Dubai Creek. This is no ordinary creek. The Dubai Creek is one of the world's busiest shipping ports. It's also a massive success in the history of man-made constructions. However, creating it took some time. It involved years of dredging and underwater construction to finally get the waterway into the condition that would be required as an international shipping hub. At the time, people scoffed at the idea and argued that it would be better to just keep on drilling for oil. But Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum was determined. He proceeded to build a small city on the bay to make the development smoother. In 1961, the ambitious construction was completed 
and Dubai was ready to announce itself as a major international shipping port. It was initially streamlined as a four-berth port, meaning that a maximum of four tanker ships could stay there. However, on completion, the Dubai port was two kilometres wide. That meant it could comfortably accommodate at least 15 ships. This was huge news around the world. Dubai was now the focus of international shipping. Its location made it an ideal trading point for all vessels travelling to and from the Middle East, Europe and Asia. Today it's home to over 8,000 companies from 100 countries. Adding to the attraction was Dubai being a free trade zone. So if you wanted to import and then directly export a product without tax, then Dubai was sounding heavenly. Realising this, Dubai began its next expansion. It focused on developing the region for tourism. And with tourism would come the financially rewarding services boom, such as finance and communications. But it needed an airport. And not just any airport, a good one. Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum was the man for the job. In 1961, Dubai opened its official international airport. It was initially expected to cater for flights between local regions such as Iran and Oman. However, there were soon many airlines bidding for rights. Then began a serious construction on hotels. And of course, being Dubai, they aimed high. Five-star hotels were built to attract investors and business people on their way to and from the Middle East. Word got around and more and more people wanted to use Dubai as their stop-off point. International airlines also wanted in, and by the 1990s, Dubai was becoming a major hub for anyone wanting to transfer or stop at a high-quality destination. But Dubai was only getting started. Even though it was hemmed in by the desert, Dubai's shores were gleaming white sand and blue waters. Why not become a tourist mecca? And so it did! In the early 2000s, Dubai embarked upon a serious investment in catching the tourist dollars. Shopping malls were constructed, international fashion labels were wooed, zoos, water parks, desert tours and water cruises were putting Dubai on the map. Seriously impressive landmarks were being built, the world-famous Burj Khalifa Tower was erected with the express purpose of making Dubai an international talking point. Not unlike Hong Kong and Singapore, Dubai maintained its focus on being a high-class venue. This naturally appealed to anyone around the world who wanted to show off their celebrity status. And by the 21st century, Dubai had become the place to not just stop off, but to go to. By the early 20th century, Dubai allowed foreign investors to purchase property without a lending partner. This led to a massive boom in construction and real estate. Dubai hasn't confined itself to tourism, of course. This is a seriously entrepreneurial part of the world we're talking about. Medical machinery, electrical engineering products and car manufacturing have also become big business in Dubai. All the while, Dubai continues to thrive as a major trading hub. Tourism and service sectors such as banking are the major industries, with very little reliance on the black gold that financed the city's wealth. For Dubai, any movie buff might remember the quote from Kevin Costner's Field of Dreams, If you build it, they will come.